So we have four players that are entering or that have already been in the market right now. There's Apple, Qualcomm, Intel, and AMD. I've done a complete analysis of all four of those platforms in a separate video, which you can check out or whatever here. A couple days after, I had to post a video literally just showcasing AMD's newest uh, processor announcement or their performance, which is the Ryzen AI 9 HX series of CPUs based on the new Zen 5 architecture. I'm actually pretty excited about this new platform. Um, but then again, Lunar Lake is right around the corner. So there's just stuff coming out every now and then. So it's really hard to compare everything at the same time. You just have to kind of wait until you have everything in, in store. But, you know, in the meantime, like I said in those videos, I've been dailying this Slim 7X for you know, about a few weeks, and I really like this thing. It's not perfect. I think Qualcomm still has a long way to go in terms of optimization, but I thought, you know, I might as well just document what my experience is like using this every day. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. So let's just, let's just do it. So today is gonna be a very interesting day. I will be away from the office for most of the day. So I thought it would be a great opportunity to test out the battery life on the Slim 7X. Uh, so I'll be doing a bunch of tasks like I'm going to be editing some photos for a client that I've been working with, doing some scripting, some research. So I think it's a perfect day to test the battery life on the Slim 7X. This morning, I began my day with a laptop fully charged at 100%. As usual, I started by catching up on emails and something about this keyboard felt off. I'm used to a lot of Lenovo laptops in the past, and this one for some reason feels cheap and shallow. But I do like the slim nature of this laptop, making it easy to carry around the house. I made some coffee, whipped up a quick egg sandwich, watched a few YouTube videos, and by the time I wrapped up my morning routine at 8 a.m., I was sitting around 93%. I had to run to my first appointment for my car to get some major maintenance done, and the service center told me it was gonna take about four hours, so I decided to chill in the waiting area and edit some photos to push the performance of the Qualcomm CPU. Now, this is the part where I wished this laptop had a full-size SD card reader, but it doesn't, so I had to use my USB hub to offload the media from the shoot I did a few days ago. If you know me, I'm into cars. I love exploring my creativity by shooting some cool rides here in Toronto. Now, the whole editing experience was pretty flawless on the Slim 7X. I was able to listen to my podcast and just zone out. The CPU had no issues handling the raw 24 megapixel photos shot from my R6 Mark II, applying some noise reduction and stuff like that. It was perfectly fine. These were the end results after spending about four hours editing on the battery and around 1 p.m. I was sitting at 11%. So that's about four hours of heavy usage. But I still wasn't done for the day. I had a team meeting to hop onto, so I picked up my car and tried to grab a bite before the meeting, but little did I know that the restaurants in my area had no power outlets, at least where you're sitting at, so I'm on the last stretch of this battery run. We're sitting around 7%, so luckily my studio was close by. I plugged in the laptop and made it to the meeting. Interestingly enough, during that meeting, Mike mentioned that the webcam quality looked a bit off. So upon close examination, I noticed that when you're running this laptop on battery, the ISP just dials back the detail of the image resulting in more array. So that was very interesting. On top of that, I noticed that the included 65 watt power adapter got extremely hot to a point where it almost burned my fingers. Seriously, here's a thermal image so you can get an idea of how bad it gets when charging. Also, it took about two and a half hours to fully charge the laptop. Now, as I wrapped up my day, adding the final touches to the photos in Photoshop, I couldn't help but notice how frustrating the trackpad is to work with. The lack of glass surface really stands out and the integrated buttons just feel cheap. It just lacks responsiveness as you'd expect. To make things worse, taps often don't register accurately, which was incredibly frustrating. Uh, for the laptop at this price point, I was expecting a much better experience. All right, so I wanna talk about some of these cool Pilot Plus features that have been thrown at our faces since Microsoft debuted a few months ago. So as you can see, we have four options here. There's Recall, Core Creator, Live Captions, and Windows Studio Effects. I feel like most of these are pretty useless. So let's start with, uh, well, Recall, we can't really test it out because um, Microsoft pushed it and they took it back because of all the backlash that came out of that feature. So. That's kind of ironic. Now, CoCreate only works with Windows PCs that have touch support. Unfortunately, the Slim 7X does not have touch support. So I'm just gonna use the image creator, which, um, you know, I'm just gonna try and see if it if it, if it it's any good. So let's say for instance, uh, create an image of a turtle holding a smartphone and a laptop. This photo looks like, okay, that definitely, I don't see a laptop in any of these photos, which is kind of weird. <laughs> but if I go to say ChatGPT and put the same prompt, 
I mean, that's, in my opinion, a pretty, I think that looks cooler than, than the one that Microsoft's image creator just generated, so. Yeah. Next up, we have live captions. Now, according to Microsoft, this thing only supports 44 languages and those 44 languages only can be translated to English and not vice versa. I speak more than one language and the other three languages that I speak actually are not supported, so I can't really test it out. So yeah, it's really not uh, that useful. In fact, YouTube actually has live captions enabled in the player and a lot of the creators are starting to implement that. So I don't know if this is as useful as you might think. The last thing we have here is Windows Studio Effects. Now this isn't anything new because we have so many other platforms like Zoom, Skype, and just a bunch of other um, online meeting platforms that have these features integrated on their software itself. So um, yeah, I don't understand why <laughs> this is just targeted as a premium feature. It's it's really not guys. Nice. Now in terms of the exterior fit and finish, I do like this title teal color of the Slim 7X, though be mindful that it is a huge fingerprint magnet. Uh, and also I did notice that just within a matter of 30 days, I've started to see the paint come off on the, um, just the edge that right over here, as you can see. So that's a little bit concerning. Uh, and um, these front facing speakers, they do, they do sound pretty good. Uh, I do like the projection, but I just don't understand why Lenovo decided to not include a headphone jack on this laptop. They clearly had the room for it, but they decided not to. Although I'm curious to hear your thoughts about this. Do most of you use Bluetooth headphones or do you just use uh, you know wired headphones? Uh, because personally, for me, when I'm editing videos, I definitely don't want that latency, which is why I always, always edit well, with wired headphones. Uh, as opposed to Bluetooth because that latency just kills the editing experience and the fact that it doesn't have it just kind of sucks. Now, for those of you who plan to use an external display with one of these new Qualcomm laptops, there are a few things that you need to keep in mind. One is uh, there are some restrictions when it comes to high resolution, high refresh rate panels. So I have a 4K 120 hertz display here at home and a 4K 60 hertz display at the office. Now, I've been playing around to see like if these laptops can support high refresh rate, but unfortunately this thing only caps at 4K at 60 Hertz. The other thing I want to point out is that the included dongle that Lenovo provides with the Slim 7X is absolutely trash. So I use the HDMI port on the adapter to power the 4K display at my office and it turns out that I can't even push 4K 60. The only thing it can do is 4K at 25 Hertz, which is absolutely insane. So yeah, I think that was a big L from Lenovo. I don't know what they were thinking. I mean, they should have just provided a good quality adapter. It seems like there's some sort of restrictions with that dongle that they include. So yeah, something that I wanted to point out. Okay, it is Tuesday, August the 13th, and I have a very packed schedule today. I mean, I have a meeting, a team meeting in like 30 minutes. The Pixel 9 is launching today, so I have to create short form content for that. I have to edit that as well. So I'm gonna be using the Slim 7X for that to see how that handles. And then also I'm heading out to North Carolina for a workshop. So uh, I have to catch my flight like by six o'clock tonight. So a lot to get done in a short amount of time. So fingers crossed, let's plug this in and get to work. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm giving up editing a video on this uh, Slim 7X, guys. It plays back the raw 4K footage shot on the FX3, no problem. But the moment I start applying my color grade in it, and if I start pushing the image a little bit more, it's it's can't handle it. And if you look at some of the usage statistics here, the NPU is completely useless. The Snapdragon CPU, I mean, you can see a little bit of usage here, but at the end of the day, like the, it's like 15%. Well, it, ultimately, it's just a memory that's actually uh, doing all its work, which um, goes to show that I don't think this application is that optimized for real-time playback performance. Uh, but when it comes to exporting, it's okay. Um, but then again, if you don't have a really good editing experience, then the whole thing just doesn't add up. Now, I wanna take a step back and talk about this whole Copilot Plus PC branding that's been literally thrown on our faces for the last couple of months. To be honest, I feel like it's done more damage than any good. In the case of the Slim 7X, Lenovo was marketing this as unleashing your creative freedom with AI, which is really not true. 
Um, I wasn't really able to edit any videos. It's really, it doesn't have the performance or the horsepower to back that up. Not to mention Lightroom performance was okay. I was able to get things done, but it's nowhere near as fast as something like the MacBook Air with the M3 chip. I mean, that is a really efficient and it's such a good performer for anything creative focused. I also feel like this dedicated co-pilot plus button shouldn't exist in the first place because I never saw myself taking advantage of it because when you have services like ChatGPT that's readily accessible by anyone on any platform, you can run that thing on a two, three, four year old computer and still be able to leverage the performance of AI if you need to use it for your um, you know, workflow. It's there, but you don't necessarily need a co-pilot plus PC to get that work done. The NPU that's built into the SOC just feels like a paperweight at this point. I haven't seen any applications in my workflow that has taken advantage of that. Also, Windows Copilot does not work offline. You have to be connected online to even utilize that application because all the stuff that they say that's on device isn't necessarily on device. It's literally, it needs to connect to the internet to validate each prompt to give you a response. So. Uh, yeah, the, the whole on-device thing is just completely blown out of proportion. You see, having used the Slim 7X for the past 30 days, I've come to realize that the price doesn't justify the hardware. You should be getting a precise, smooth trackpad. The keyboard should feel a little bit more of a higher standard, but that's not the case. I think that they've cheaped out on those materials, which, you know, isn't typically a, a Lenovo thing to do, but they did. Uh, the only thing that's actually notably, or in fact, really good with this laptop is the display. The 3K 90 Hertz OLED screen is super sharp, very bright, color accurate, and you know you can get a lot of work done. And especially if you take this thing to cafes, that bright display can come in clutch. I did notice a few quirks as I was using this thing. So first of all, when I have this thing connected to my external display, the display actually blinks out for a few seconds randomly out of the blue. Uh, and also this power button on the right-hand side is super delicate. Like I can move this thing from one place to another and then it just automatically or accidentally just turns off or puts this thing to sleep, which was also super frustrating. So in the end, should you consider a Copilot Plus PC? Well, if it's $800, then maybe, because you're really getting great efficiency and of course, a lot of the app compatibility is getting ironed out at the time of making this video, but there's still a long way to go. So. I feel like at this point, you should probably just skip it and consider options from AMD, Intel, and even Apple because they're just a little bit more refined in terms of app support. I'll be happy to revisit this conversation in a year just to see how much the platform has evolved. But until then, I think it's time to retire this thing and just move on to something a little bit better.